Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this two-part video series on a very special layout design. In this first part, we're going to look at the design of the passenger terminal and adjacent freight yard. I chose to dedicate an entire video just on this design as I want to showcase the process uh, that we went through to come to exactly this design. So I will explain in this video what is the purpose of each and every turnout and how we came to this track arrangement. And then in part two of this video series, we're going to look at the rest of the layout design of the three deck layout. But more of that in the next video, a lot to discuss today. Let's get started. Roll the intro. Here we go. Here we go, let's dive straight into the wish list of the client, point out things that are relevant for this video. The client wanted a double track mainline, passenger running, a freight yard, and a smaller branch line. So basically he wanted everything. Luckily he did have 6.8 meters by two and a half meters. So this is for European standards, this is quite a, a large space. So first thing we need to look at is what is the purpose of this station? And the station in the city is called Rostadt. So in Rostadt we have the passenger terminal and a freight yard that is shown here in black. And we need to generate some traffic and give this some, some back history. So there's a main line coming in from the west going straight to the east, both will be linked to staging. And to generate just some more traffic, uh, I think this should be some kind of junction station. So here I added this red line, that's uh, the main going to southwest. I also wanted a branch, so that'll be connected here on the uh, east side, goes in this direction. Again, this is a high over schematics, so just to indicate there are some various industries along the branch line. And here on the right, there should be a, a runaround at the end of the branch. And if there's space for it, we, we can add some industry on the main line and more, so maybe some more industries in Rostadt itself. So when I sent this to the client, his first reaction was, wow, that looks amazing, but is that all gonna fit in the space? Well, I do have a few tricks up my sleeve. So I sent the client this schematic. What we see here is the station in the middle and then what appears to be a double track main line coming in from the west and going to the east. On the east side, it's basically right left traffic. So the bottom track here would come out of the station, go through to the loop, and then arrive back on the uh, north station into the yard. But on the west side, as you remember, we have a main west here in black. So this will be one of the two uh, double tracks, and it will basically be bi-directional. And then the main southwest is the red line, which will also be bi-directional, which will be the south track of the two main line tracks. So this would give the appearance of a double main line. However, on the west side, we'll have way more functionality, and we'll have also trains that are wiggling through the station to get to the uh, north or south tracks. So it'll be a bit more interesting than just a through station or train will be zipping through from left to right. And then as well on the east side, if you do not want the train that just went through the station to go through the loop and to reappear again, there will be an option where the train after it went through the loop can dive back into the staging. So it's shown in this schematic by this dotted green line here. So after sending this to the client, he commented that he really liked the extra functionality uh, that this schematic gives, uh, and yet it's only need for one helix. So now that the uh, schematics and the story and, and the traffic generation is clear, we need to start filling in the platform itself. So then we come to this nice schematic overview. So again, on the left, the main line west and the main line southwest in black and red. Then on the right, we have the main east. Then we have the branch line here in blue. In the middle, we zoom into the platforms and the station itself. The client wanted four platforms. So that's what I drew in here very schematically. And then we dedicated, because we have right left traffic, the north two platforms to the uh, westbound direction and the south two platforms to the eastbound direction. So basically what we're going to do here, we're going to connect the dots and define all the different scenarios of traffic that will take place in Rostad. Let's start off with the most easy one. A train is coming in from the main line west, and then we have to go to one of the south platforms, and then we head out to the main line east. So I did this for a lot of different scenarios, as you see here. So scenario one is the one we just discussed, come in from the main line west and then go to main line east. Scenario number two would be a for the main line southwest, coming in, going to the bottom track, and then going to main line east. 
Do keep in mind you can also combine these scenarios. So if you combine scenario one with scenario two, then the main line west will come in here and then go parallel to basically the main line southwest to the uh, third platform and then head to the east once the uh, red train has passed. Of course, if you look at scenario four, what uh, goes out must come back. So you see the train coming back from the east, we'll just go straight to platform number two and on to the west. So then I defined all these different scenarios. Do keep in mind this is a passenger station. So as you see here in scenario number three, let's say we have one train coming in from the east, this red one, and it will occupy station number two. And as it takes some time for the passengers to the onboard and offboard, then another train from the east might be arriving, this uh, black one going to Main West. So this will have to diverge into platform number one. What this shows is these connections, that's what this is all about, have to be available. You have to be able to get from this main line east to this platform number one. And as you see in scenario four, you have to get from main line east also to this platform number two, etc., etc. Notice scenario number four and scenario number five, the branch line uh, is also uh, there and this track is occupied. So you have to send your trains to different platforms accordingly. Then in the all one on the bottom right, you see all the different connections that are available. Do note that some are actually missing as they're not required. So from this track right here, going to main east, this is not required. So now you're thinking, what's the fun of all this? What's the purpose of this? Well, now we go into some track planning design and we basically fill in all these different scenarios and stick them into one station. And what do you get? This is what you get. So again, we have the main line here and here coming through and going out right here and right here. And we have all these different connections. So just really to spell it out, let's take scenario number two. We have to go from the main line to southwest, the platform number four, and then to the east direction. So that's what you see here. We're coming from here, and then we're gonna need this connection here, go to platform number four, and these two turnouts to go back into the east direction. And all these different connections that we saw in the all schematic, these all have to be filled in. And then in basic form, you get this layout. But this is not a very efficient layout and there's still quite a lot of flaws in it so i came up to this second design that's like this it's a bit more organized and the order and sequence of the turnout has been thought through as well so i sent this to the client and then what did i get back i got back this reaction <laughs> so this is basically a schematic where it has a double crossover on the right two double uh, switches or English turnouts or whatever you want to call them. And then on the left is a simple zigzag. So I told the client, you're absolutely right. With this format, you can do everything all the time. All the trains can go anywhere, everywhere you want. But frankly speaking, this is a very boring uh, design and it just looks very static. And there's also a second issue with this. Although a mope might be prototypically very accurate, we have to start thinking about selective compression because on our little layouts, the traffic density is many, many times higher than in real life. Where in real life, you might have one train coming in every five minutes. In our layout, you might have one coming in every 30 or every one minute for every 30 seconds. So what does that mean? Well, let's go back to the layout design. So again, I, I can compress this. So for instead of this turnout or this turnout and this turnout, we'll substitute it for this uh, English turnout with this one here. And then we can do the same for this one, two, three. We'll substitute it with this guy right here. But you need to keep in mind these turnouts in real life, the uh, English turnout is about the same work and amount of moving components as four normal turnouts. So keeping that in mind, let's start counting them. Four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 turnouts. This design has 17 turnouts in the more condensed version. The original design has 10, 11. So we got 55% more turnouts in this condensed version. So now let's look at the functionality. So let's go back to our scenarios. What you see in scenario number one is platform number one is occupied and platform number two is occupied. And these trains want to leave more or less at the same time. So train one will go here to the main west and train on platform number two will go to the main southwest. In the condensed version, the train will go from here to this line and it goes to this English turnout. And the second train will go from platform number two to this uh, line here. And hold and behold, it goes to the same English turnout, which means these trains have to depart 
after each other and cannot depart at the same time. This is not really what you want if you have a very condensed, compressed operation schedule. So let's go back to the old design. Train one can leave here, go through this turnout right here. And then the second train we talked about can leave from platform number two and go at the same time onto this line right here because we have two sets of turnouts that are parallel to each other. So what do I mean by parallel to each other? Well, I just showed it in my example. There's one here and one here. So basically trains can go in these directions at the same time. So these turnouts all actually have a purpose. So you can condense them, yes, into these English turnouts, but you're cutting away a part of the purpose. So basically this one has 17 turnouts and this one had 11. You have 55% more turnouts in this scenario and have less functionality. So why would you do it? Well, the only really good reason to do it is either A, you like the view of these English turnouts or B, you don't have a lot of space, so you need to compress. But in our case, we have plenty of space. Uh, so we're not going to go to, for this uh, design right here. Later on, we came to the conclusion we only need three platforms and not four. So all the scenarios look like this now. Most notable changes uh, is number five in the all, some of it changed as well, but not that much to be honest. So we can just move to a track plan like this. Basically, we just left out this uh, bottom one right here. Just quickly drew in the platforms to show where they would be. Uh, here on the north, the station would be connecting to platform number one, and platform number two and three would have all separate uh, platform that would be connected with a walk bridge. This is only the passenger side of the story. Now we need to go also to the freight side of the story. Well, this is where it gets interesting. So we go back to the schematics. Here you see in red and black and blue everything we already discussed. The green color will be the freight color. The yard will actually be a little bit shifted from the uh, passenger terminal. So from the west, we can just basically add some turnouts here, nothing too special to get into the yard. But on the east side, it's gonna be a little bit more complex. So if you add all the connections that are possible, uh, these three the north one is for uh, traffic coming in from the east you want to enter the yard like that then the second one is if you're in the yard and you want to head to the east that's why we need that and in the yard the smaller uh, trains will be built for the branch line so there needs to be a connection to the branch line as well so going through the same basic exercise of just getting all the functionality down first here we have all the tracks to the passenger station nothing special there on the west side, we said we're just gonna come off the main with some turnouts here, just like that, nothing too special. This would be the uh, yard, uh, just basically put in very simply with one track, just to get the idea. Here we have the branch line, and then here you see all the functionality. So the branch line should be able to get into the yard some way or another, and also incoming traffic from the west should be able to get to the yard some way or another. And of course, from the yard, you're able to get out in that direction as well. But this will take up way too much space, and it's just a base bit too simplified. So then we came to this solution. I also drew in the rest of the yard. Let's look at that first. So we just have one, two, three tracks, double-ended, and then one stub track right here. This track right here is basically your yard lead. Let's have to put it in right there, it's not the way. And now we're gonna get interesting. So if we're coming in from the west, you will enter the yard like that. If you're in the yard and you wanna head out west, we'll go in that direction, it's all right there. And then because you do not, if you're coming in from the branch, I'm gonna go through the main line and foul the main line just to get into the yard. Because remember the, the, the branch line actually has almost no business to be on the main line. So I added this separate, uh, well, what to call it, bypass track. So coming in from the branch line, you'll take this bypass track, stay off the main, and then go to the yard as such. I think the east side is, is quite self-explanatory uh, how this would work. One little note I do wanna make is that the, um, the passenger line coming from the branch, that will uh, arrive at platform number three, line number three. So that will go onto the main line, but all the freight side of things coming from the branch line will go in this direction. So that is more or less all the functionality. So if you, just to give you an idea of, of what we're looking at in, in the layout itself, this is the design. So you see it's, it is quite different, or it's actually exactly the same, but it just looks different. We added mostly a massive uh, curve here on the station. You see this whole jiggly mess on the right is still the same. So this is a branch line right here. 
this would be your yard lead and then here we added just uh, one two tracks just for terminal for the switcher and for the uh, diesel that's going to go up the branch here on the left side one thing we did is we actually moved the turnouts away from the station and connected it a bit further down the line the switch from the west and the southwest uh, tracks so that is the station design and how we came to this arrangement i am looking forward to your comments down below this is it for part one do look out for part two it's still work in progress but then we're going to go through this uh, three deck layout uh, that has the branch line on it uh, more lane line and a massive staging as well thank you guys all for watching that's all for now thank you bye bye